Good evening, boys and girls. This is my second attempt at this video. It is currently midnight. I am in need of the drink of Unboxing Champions in this uh, plastic glass to help keep me going. Because I did an earlier uh, version of this video and I wasn't really happy with it. I didn't think I had as much energy or focus or whatever, plus a lot of the things that I was showing off I actually packaged up to sell to some of my uh, faithful buyers of some of the things that I have. Uh, so in other words, a lot of stuff that was shown in the video is now no longer in my possession. So, you know, I just wanted to do a version of this that was more up to date and didn't show you things that are just going to be gone. So anyway, uh, we're going to make this the better version of this video. So anyway, uh, I'm going to be showing off some uh, things that came from eBay, Amazon, uh, some Second and Charles finds, and then uh, some leftovers from the family video uh, video that I did recently, ones that were on the shelf that I just forgot to show you, and then some ones that I picked up that I deliberately didn't show you before for reasons that I will get into in a bit. First off, we're going to do the one eBay find, which was the Hellraiser Debtor came in the mail. I do believe that this is a bootleg. It came from Brazil, and, um, you know, it's it's in this big case. The label looks like it's printed on there, but doesn't matter to me because this uh, movie normally is extremely expensive to find and the I've seen the official release. I used to own the official release uh, and it's really nothing to write home about. If anything, I bet that this one might even be better than the official release, which, you know, it was one of those uh, Miramax uh, releases that was put out by, I guess, uh, Echo Bridge, I think. And so if that were to be put out again, I'm sure it would be done bigger and better these days because of the Paramount re-releases of everything. And then these two are from Amazon. Got the Steelbook of Motel Hell, uh, which is a great, great kind of horror comedy that kind of, you know, makes fun of some of the cliches of the slasher genre in a clever way. Uh, I really like this movie, and I really love that uh, Scream Factory re-released it with that gorgeous Steelbook design. I've got uh, the pumpkin head one uh, in the mail too, so you know, can't wait for that to show up. And then this one's from Kino Lorber, and it is Rawhead Rex, which was a screenplay uh, written by Clive Barker, and uh, so I'm eager to check it out. I have not watched it yet. I know nothing about it, but as soon as I saw that it was a steel book and I saw that awesome uh, cover, I was like, I gotta have that. And when I first heard of this movie I thought it said Rawhide Rex but it's Rawhead Rex which if it was uh, Rawhide Rex then it probably would have to be very cowboy oriented don't you think and then these two here uh, were some second and Charles finds that I uh, managed to get with some store credit from some stuff that I traded in uh, you remember assassination here but uh, you remember it before with that sun faded cover well, I found it again with that really hard to find slip cover, and so all is right with the world once again and uh so I'm eager to check this out. It's a like South Korean uh action gangster film, which is pretty cool um I like you know foreign cinema and uh well go u s a is a good company to put it out there and you know bring it to the west and then this one, uh, happy birthday to me with that. I believe it was the Walmart exclusive VHS uh, retro cover. Um, this one I managed to find, and it's got this really cool other uh, artwork on the inside. I have not seen it, but I know it's one of those, like, you know, whatever this would have been, 80s, early 80s, um, you know, horror films. 1980. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I know it's got quite a following, but... Yeah, just put that in the collection. And then here are some of the uh, the um, family video acquisitions that I forgot that I had on the shelf there. 
Um, and that's another reason why I wanted to re-record this, because there was some stuff that I was lo just looking off camera, and I was like, oh, forgot that one. So, first up is The Debt, uh, which I remembered seeing the trailers for when it was coming out in theaters. Never saw it, but heard good things about it, and this was back when uh, Jessica Chastain and Sam Worthington were relatively new in the public consciousness. And then next up was uh, Erased with uh, Aaron Eckhart there. And, uh, you know, this is a movie that I saw the trailer of and I wanted to see it, never did. Um, I actually met uh, one of the producers of this film. Uh, she spoke at my uh, one of my screenwriting classes, which is pretty cool. She was also producer on Crazy Heart and on uh, Hysteria, the one with Maggie Gyllenhaal about the invention of the vibrator. Um, this one, called Fair Game Here, with, um, with Naomi Watts and Sean Penn, and directed by Doug Lyman, who did The Born Identity, and he did, uh, um, Edge of Tomorrow and things like that. What's interesting about this movie, apparently, according to the YouTuber Odd Header, Apparently, in the end credits of this film, there is some kind of hidden message, some kind of hidden code that, as of today, as of this moment, as far as I know, has not been deciphered even by expert code breakers. So, who knows what it says? Who knows if it's even there? Maybe they're just fishing for the moon in the water or trying to hunt something that isn't there, but... It could very well be it. I mean, it looks like there is something there, but uh, who knows what it means. I don't know. I'm no expert at this. Why are you hounding me about it? Um, and then we got Suburbicon. Still got to find the slipcover for this. This was a George Clooney-directed film that was written by the Coen brothers and George Clooney and Grant Heslov, so it's got quite the uh, pedigree there on the screenplay. And... Um, and then just a few DVDs. Got uh, Arctic Apocalypse, which was the Asylum's, I guess, one of their many um, disaster films, which, you know, those are relatively easy to knock out. And they, you know, it says that it's in the tradition of The Day After Tomorrow, which, okay, fine, but it also... These natural disaster movies, it's like no one owns the copyright on a hurricane or a blizzard or, a, you know, this or that. So, um... You know, it's one of those things that these seem like they're relatively easy to crank out, um, especially on a low budget like that. And then this is one that I heard really good things about, The Death of Stalin, um, which, you know, is it's such an interest. I like the, um, I like movies and just, you know, the stories of, like, infamous people in general, especially, like, dictators and, you know, people that are kind of the arch villains of history and especially when their uh, movies are able to make comedy out of that and satire, I think that that is a largely lost art, um, but I'm glad that there are a select few keeping it alive. And then uh, last up is um, Loch Ness Terror there, which, you know, you can already tell what that's about. And uh, put out by Sony Pictures Entertainment, so, you know cut above your usual monster schlock, I assume. So that's all for the um, family video ones, except that there's a whole bunch more. And why am I separating the two? Well, it's because uh, I was deliberately waiting on showing you these because uh, they were 20 for $10, uh, 20 movies for $10, but you had to buy all 20 of them and the catch was that uh, none of them came with their original cases or artwork. It was just disc only. And so I did buy 20 of them because, you know, 20 for $10, that's a pretty damn good deal. So 50 cents each. And uh, I did buy all 20. Uh, some of them I sold, uh, you know, to some of my loyal buyers. and But most of them I kept. And... Uh, I was able to print out a bunch of custom covers for them uh, because, again, when you don't have the original artwork, why not take advantage of it and do something better or at least different? And uh, so I did just that. Now, most of these I found somewhere else like on Custom Maniacs or just an internet search, and then some of them I actually designed myself, and I'll point out which ones those are. 
But first up, I'll show you the two DVDs. These two covers I just found through a Google search, so when they actually printed, they came out a little bit blurry, um, and I might try to find higher resolution versions of them, but um, House of Sand and Fog here with Jennifer Connelly and with uh, Ben Kingsley. For some reason, I thought this was a Ridley Scott film, but it isn't. Uh, but uh, I think that this has one of the coolest titles of any movie ever, and I heard really good things about it. I have no clue what it's about, though, but, I mean, it seems pretty interesting to me. And then uh, this movie, Simone, uh, from 2002, directed by and written by Andrew Nichol, um, a Andrew Nichol, excuse me, not Nichol, uh, who wrote uh, The Truman Show, and he did Gattaca, he did The Host, you know, a bunch of stuff. And uh, In Time, I believe, was another one of his. Um, and this one, I remembered, uh, when this came out, I remembered that initial poster, um, you know, of this, you know, naked woman that's all pixelated and stuff, and I was like, uh, however old I was, 10 or 11, and even at that time, I was like, okay, um... You know, because I always had an eye for the ladies, even back then. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to see it, and then many, many years later, I finally did. And I remembered, at the time, I was a little disappointed with it, because I kept wanting it to go in a direction that it didn't ultimately go. So the, the, the premise is that, you know, Al Pacino basically creates a, an actress virtually uh, from the ground up, so she's totally a digital character, uh, she doesn't physically exist, um, and he's trying, he makes her into a superstar, but he has to cover up the fact that she's entirely virtual, um, which is interesting, and I mean, I think that it, it foreshadowed a lot about our society because of, like, bringing Peter Cushing back from the dead, uh, for Rogue One, or the de-aging technology and the Irishman and things like that, it definitely uh, predicted my, many of those things, plus like deep fakes and stuff. But um, what I kind of wanted it to explore, and this is the direction I would have taken with it, is that instead of trying to cover up the fact that she's a digital character, I would have had him come out and, and say outright, yes, I did this, and think of what it'll do to revolutionize the film industry. Think of all the dead actors we could bring back from the dead uh from the dead, uh, virtually, and, uh, you know, uh, and then maybe have the Screen Actors Guild freak out because they'd be like, oh, you're taking our jobs, and, you know, then it gets into a whole, you know, societal battle over, like, you know, what constitutes a real person or a real performance and all that stuff. Might be a little too dry for a, uh, you know, large mainstream movie that's meant to be a a hit or whatever, but, you know, I think that's still an interesting thing to explore. But yeah, you can't really tell on camera, but this is kind of a blurry image, so I might have to track down a higher resolution version. But, you know, this will get me started at least. And then, actually, uh, Andrew, uh, Andrew Nichol actually ended up marrying, um, the actress in here, uh, whose name I cannot make out because, again, it's very, very blurry. Um, but yeah, he actually ended up marrying her, and I think they're still married today, so he definitely lucked out. And then, that's all for the DVDs, and now we get to the Blu-rays, and these are ones that found some pretty neat, uh, neat stuff here. So, uh, and keep in mind, so these are discs only that I managed to find custom artwork, um, and we got 30 Days of Night and 30, nice, 30 Days of Night Dark Days, a double feature pack here with that really cool cover that I managed to find and uh, only managed to find the Dark Days disc. Um, I'll have to track down the first one so I can complete them. Uh, there were some uh, I, ones I didn't show off just because I didn't, you know, feel like they were all that relevant. It was like uh, Doom, the disc only, those that came in the mail, or like, you know, I found like the Nutcracker. Um, that uh blu-ray disc after having just gotten the 4k so i completed that like those are all just you know they're not all that interesting so you don't really need to see those but I'm trying to show off the really cool stuff uh that i managed to get and you know so i printed those custom covers off um at office depot and cut them myself and all that 
Next up, uh, The Adventures of Tintin, and I, I deliberately picked this cover because it has the full international title that we in the United States did not get, which is The Secret of the Unicorn, because I guess that uh, Americans don't find unicorns all that sexy, except that they totally do, because if you look at you know a store like A Second and Charles or really any any place that caters to a remotely female demographic, you will see unicorns everywhere. And so, yeah, lost opportunity. But yeah, this was the uh, Steven Spielberg and um, Peter Jackson collaboration, and it has a screenplay by Steven Moffat, Edgar Wright, and Joe Cornish, and it's a comic book adaptation, and yet nobody talks about it, and I've never actually seen it. So yeah, uh, kind of trying to fill in that lost uh, Spielberg you know, a uh, movie in my repertoire. And then this uh, one was a cover that I actually designed myself, and that was for the Belco experiment, which I did have in the collection at one point, but I sold it uh, just because I, you know, wanted, I don't know what, I wanted something else, or I, sometimes, you know, it's just good to cycle the collection through, but this was a cover that I designed myself, and I think it turned out pretty well. Um, and uh, eager to check this out. The, it was uh, obviously a script by James Gunn. Has a lot of James Gunn regulars like Michael Rooker. And uh, yeah, I think this one turned out pretty well. It's I like the original cover also, but this one's at least different. And, and I don't have to worry about, you know, hunting down a slip cover and all that stuff because, you know, I got something that's special to me and something that no one else is going to have in their collections. And speaking of which, here's another one that I designed. It is a uh, Bridge of Spies here, another Steven Spielberg film. This one I remembered seeing in the theater, and you know I think it was solid. You know it was not my favorite Spielberg film, but it was solid. You know another uh, Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg collaboration. Um, now this case here, I tried to kind of evoke the spirit of something that you might have seen in like a Criterion Collection Blu-ray without outright copying um their style and uh i think this one turned out really really nice um some again the thing i'm finding with being able to put all these th uh different image assets together really just depends on how high quality of of images you're able to find um because some of them you know are higher resolution than others and you know that sort of thing so, like, the back part of this is a little bit blurrier than I would have liked, but, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where I'm still relatively new at the um, original designs game for Blu-rays, and uh, but I think that this design here looks really, really cool. I think it looks better than the uh, official design, or at least different. And then, next up, we got, I'll just show these both off, uh, Clash of the Titans and Wrath of the Titans, um, the only disc that I managed to find at the, uh, family video was for this one. I have not found the Wrath of the Titans disc, but it's, you know, it's not exactly a hard movie to find. Uh, so I'll, I'll eventually grab it, but I just wanted to print that one out while I was, you know, thinking about the other one. And, uh, so I think those ones turned out pretty well. I did not design those, but, you know, I think they look pretty sweet. This one I did design, and I was actually very proud of this one, A Cure for Wellness, excuse me. Um, I found this really high-resolution uh, poster that was meant to emulate the Rosemary's Baby aesthetic. Designed the spine myself, and I used this high-resolution poster here for the back, and there's some of the credit information down there in a retro style. I think this looks really cool and really artsy. Um, and I've been wanting to see this movie ever since I first heard about it because I love Dane DeHane. Uh, we Danes gotta stick together. Um, it's a Gore Verbinski, you know, horror film, and it's like, you know, uh, eager to uh, to check it out. But if nothing else, I'm really, really proud of how good this design turned out. And then this one was another one that I found for free. I didn't pay, you know, credits uh, on Custom Maniacs for it, but I probably will because this hologram for the king here, this one really turned out kind of crappy. I haven't even seen the movie, but another, you know, Tom Hanks film that I haven't seen, but this is one I might uh, print out 
with a higher resolution version of it. Um, but uh, just wanted to show that one off. I did sell my other copy, uh, just, you know, again, in a bundle, but got it back in that form. And then, so the catch with the whole um, 20 for 10 thing was you had to buy 20 movies. And so part of why I wanted to get rid of some of them in my, you know, big bundle to some of my buyers was, like, I had to inevitably buy some movies that I already had or movies that I was, like, you know... Maybe I won't own that, be or but I can still like practice my custom cover skills on it, and then this one I did keep in the collection for you know simple reasons. Katy Perry, part of me. Why did I get this? Because Katy Perry's smoking hot. That's why. Um, simple as that. Um, I have not seen this. I have no idea what I'm in for, but you know could think of worse uh ways to while away some hours and then uh we got this cool uh two pack here of my big fat greek wedding one and two this uh another custom uh cover there i only managed to find uh the second one i needed to find the first one which i remembered seeing when i was a kid and i loved it and then we got uh pompeii 3d with this cool custom cover I only found the 3D disc at uh, the family video, which, this again, the shitty thing is that, you know, just nature of the beast is that they separate out the discs, and, you know, you have to, like, if they have, like, let's say, Blu-ray DVD combo pack, if they have both of them, you have to kind of buy them twice to get them, you know, in a complete package, but, you know, so I'll, I think I can track down the Blu-ray of this pretty easily. Now, this one... I also designed myself, and this one turned out pretty well too, and it's Savages. Um, so the original cover uh, for this, uh, the back part is kind of blurry because again, it was a free one that I found. I can probably find a higher resolution version of it. But uh, so the, the normal Blu-ray of this, I really didn't care for the design. Uh, and I'm normally not a fan of like, movie posters that just show a little that they're kind of too busy they show a little too much um but this one i think actually does it fairly well i like the savages logo coming down um i added the credits here from a different poster and the directed by oliver stone part i added there i designed the spine myself and then this back part i just happened to find because i didn't want to have to retype all this crap um but yeah, I think that this turned out nice, and especially the cover here, because I really do like that poster a lot, and I don't like um, the way that the uh, official artwork looks, because I think it just looks boring. This one, I think, captures my interest, and especially with the credits along the sides there, like I have made it. And then this movie I've heard is Dog Shit, Seventh Son, but that is a cool uh, custom cover that I managed to get. Um, you know, worth at least a watch, because again, 50 cents, you know, not a big sacrifice. This is another free one that uh, I do know that where I can get a higher resolution version of it is just another account uh, for another website that I'd have to pay credits for, Strangerland, which um, I shipped my other copy of it to one of my loyal buyers, um, but, you know, managed to get it back. Um, I'll I'll find a higher resolution version of either this cover or a different one because this one, uh, it printed out kind of blurry. But you know, again, it'll get me started. And then the tourist, uh, another custom cover that I managed to find. Uh, heard very mixed things about this. A lot of people, I guess, didn't know what to make of it. But it got three Golden Globe nominations, including like best picture, musical, or comedy. So who knows? make up my own mind and then last but certainly not least z for zachariah with our dear margot robbie with brown hair uh, i know that there's a slip for this so i'll track it down uh i had kind of hoped that there was some cool unique custom artwork for this but no this is just a scan of the official cover so yeah this is my uh way to catch you up on some of the cool uh, customs that I've been making or buying or whatever, and then just other things that have come. Uh, we got some more cool pre-orders that are coming on the way, so stay tuned for those. 
And uh, hopefully uh, you are finding the world of custom covers as interesting as I am, because I'm really enjoying the process. It's something that I'm wanting to just continue to hone my skills and get better and better, and then maybe that could turn into its own side hustle or, or maybe designing original posters for you know indie films or something, I don't know. Uh, just keep my mind open. But if you enjoyed this, then please like, share, subscribe. Hit the bell icon, set phasers to stun, warp factor 5, and uh, I am going to finish off my drink of Unboxing Champions, and then I will go to bed, because the week has begun, my friends. Hopefully you're staying safe out there, and uh, stay tuned for more exciting video, uh, videos slash content slash bowel movements, whatever you want to call them.